Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today, fascinating video. We're going to react to why is the Quran in Arabic? Wonders of the Quran, episode 4 by Rihat Muslim. I believe that this is truly the barrier for many people in the West. When they find out about Islam, when they find out about monotheism, it is appealing to them naturally. But a big hurdle is, of course, the language. Why do I have to pray in Arabic? Why do I have to say Salamu Alaikum? Why do I have to become an Arab? Some people are really afraid of. They believe they're going to let go of their identity, of their culture, of their nationality, and they're going to trade it into becoming an Arab. So I can clearly see this fear in the West. It is really important for us to understand why the Quran has been revealed in Arabic. With no further ado, let's have a look. There's a saying that there are 1,000 words for camel in Arabic. And actually, that wouldn't be far from the truth. Arabic is an incredibly rich and precise language. Linguists describe it as the best language to express deep topics in just a few words. It is highly complex and is referred to as the most eloquent of all languages. To give you an idea, there are more than 12 million Arabic words compared to about 500,000 in English. I looked this up online and it's actually really true. A camel in Arabic is Gemma. How can there be so many different words for a camel? Here is a list of some examples. Look at how much description each name carries. For example, a nahus is a female camel that doesn't allow itself to be milked. Or an ash'al, which is a white camel that has a different coloured tail. Instead of using more words to add description, Arabic words contain many descriptions and meanings within. In just in one Arabic? word. Of course, this would explain already why the Quran was recited in Arabic, because like this, it would be easy to memorize and at the same time encapsulate all the meaning needed. There are more than 10 different variations for love. You don't just say, I love this or I love that. There are different types of love. For example, Mawadda. You have that in Greek too. The strong type of love. It is a love of tenderness and compassion, to the point where you would sacrifice something from yourself for the happiness of the other. Can you see how just one word captures such a deep description? The Islamic greeting, Assalamu Alaikum, isn't just the Arabic way of saying hello. The apparent translation is peace be upon you, but even that isn't accurate enough. Whenever anyone says Assalamu Alaikum, it actually means may Allah's peace be with you, may he grant you prosperity, may he grant you wholeness and completeness, may you lack nothing and have everything you need to be successful. That's amazing. All of that in two words. Is it therefore a surprise that Allah chose such a deep, descriptive and direct language to convey his words to humanity? People, they try to convince us that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have wanted, he could have revealed the Quran in another language. And this is not true. The Quran has been revealed in Arabic for a reason. And it's because it was the only language which is rich enough to tell us what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to say. Ancient Arabic is far more sophisticated, far more advanced, far more complex, far more intricate, far more involved than proper modern standard Arabic. This really makes you think about evolution, no? If the atheists are correct and evolution is true, then everything must become more complex, more sophisticated. But how come that our languages were more sophisticated and now become simpler? 1400 years ago, Arabs were at the pinnacle of the Arabic language. They could naturally speak in poetry like me and you can speak in a normal conversation. Just like the media controls the world today, language controlled Arab society before Islam. Sure. One speech had the power to humiliate tribes for generations. Before Islam, they would call anyone that was non-Arab, Ajam, 
which literally meant silent and speechless. Why? Because no other language was as alive. To them, their language equaled life. When they heard the Quran for the first time, these same people that had so much pride and expertise the movie, were the completely message. shocked and mesmerized. Some froze in their places, some started shaking, some went pale in the face, and some even cried. They didn't know how to respond. The eloquence of the Quran was simply on another level. You see, the Arabs had mastered all types of rhetoric, all types of linguistic devices. They had an entire discipline of different types of poetry. They had different what is called awzan, which means, which means meters and rhymes. They had different styles. They had different rhetoric devices. The Quran comes and it is simply unclassifiable in any one of these pigeonholes. I must learn Arabic, you know, recently, man. Recently, last year in England, they discovered a manuscript that was claimed to be Shakespeare. Everybody got excited. Oh my God, a new manuscript of Shakespeare. And all the Shakespeare experts in the world came and they studied and they studied and they studied. And then they finally concluded, no, it's not. It was a false alarm. How do you know? Oh, because the style is not the style of Shakespeare. Sure. What does that show us? Shakespeare, no matter how eloquent he is, he has one style and you recognize it. Guess what? Of course, like a what is the style of the Quran? You cannot classify it. You cannot classify it. It is beyond human categorization. Each surah, each verse is unique. Its rhythm is clear. It's resounding, but it is not classifiable. There are many verses in the Quran that explain why it came down in Arabic. Of them is chapter 26, verse 195, where Allah says that it was revealed in perfect and eloquent Arabic so that it may be clear. The word mubin in this verse literally means that which clarifies, leaving no room for doubts. Let me show you an example of this. And this yet again, guys, I know you're going to hate me for this, but the Quran itself claims that it's clear. And this is why I always come back to the Hadiths, not saying that there is no value in the Hadiths, not saying that the Hadiths are not authentic, not at all. But my question truly is why we would need anything added if the Quran, the word of God, clearly states itself that it is sufficient, that it is clear, that it is easy to understand. This is truly my question to this very day. Oh. I know you hate me with this. Alameen is a verse all Muslims know and recite from chapter 1. The apparent translation of these four words is All praise is due to Allah, Lord of the worlds. This is far from complete. Look at how much reading we have to do to get a more accurate translation. Oh, wow. If four Arabic words carry this much depth and explanation, Imagine how many more pages of the Quran would be if it was in English. Sure. In fact, Impossible there to are memorize them. books that dig deeper into a fuller interpretation of the Quran, such as Tafsir ibn Kathir or Tafsir al-Tabari. Saying that, the best way to bring the Quran to life is to understand the language. This of is course. why you find many new Muslims and non-Arabs studying Arabic. Think about it. The Quran came down in one of the most deep, complex and eloquent languages 1400 years ago to a man that never took part in any form of poetry. Not only did the Quran take eloquence to a whole new level, ever since, no Arabic literature has come close to challenging the power and style of the Quran, even after all these years. Isn't this a miracle? Please subscribe to never miss an episode of the wonders of the Quran. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. Yet again, thank you so much for your recommendation here. I believe that it became apparent to the viewers why the Quran would have been revealed in Arabic. A language that is so rich, so deep in meaning is, of course, the medium to choose, especially in those times. Like this, you can remember a limited amount of words which imply a vast meaning. If the Quran would have been revealed in modern day English, which is of course an impossibility because back then you didn't have modern day English. Nevertheless, it would have taken probably 20 to 30 times the amounts of paper. And I said it before, this is why I am learning Arabic at the moment because I'm so fascinated with the Quran. Yet again, 
fascinated with the Quran. I started reading the Hadith and yet again, I can say there's absolutely value in them, no doubts about it. But to me personally, reading Hadiths is like reading history books, certain accounts about people, but not the direct word of God. The value that I got, the clarification that I got from reading the Quran by myself, I never got from any other material. And this is the true power of the Quran for me personally. If we assume that it is the word of God speaking to us directly, it is in book form so we can pick it up and research for ourselves. Selves. It clarified all my doubts about the Trinity. It clarified all my doubts about saints, about idol worship and what not. It was a crystal clear message. Yet again, is there room for further interpretation? Of course, and this is why we have scholars. But nevertheless, for me personally, the Quran was sufficient. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon, for example, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.